Kevin, thank you very much. A night they have been looking forward to here in Spokane, Washington for a long, long time. The kennel is absolutely rocking. North Carolina, the Tar Heels have traveled a long way from home. Two powerhouse programs going head to head here in Spokane as Gonzaga and Carolina get ready to go. Hi, everybody. Dave Fleming alongside Jay Billis. Two powerhouse programs. The problem, Jay, is Carolina's not playing like one right now, especially on the offensive end. This just has not been a typical Roy Williams offense for the Tar Heels this year. They haven't hit the 80-point mark yet this season. That's almost unheard of for them. They're not shooting the ball well from the outside. They're struggling even on the inside with some of their size. And to make matters worse, their star freshman point guard, Cole Anthony, had surgery a couple days ago. He's out for a month or so. How does Carolina get the offense going? Roy Williams isn't going to put in one player that's going to make up for Cole Anthony's 20 points a game. It's going to have to be a collective effort. North Carolina's got to play mistake-free basketball, and they've got to get excellent contributions from their guards who have to take care of the ball and get the ball in side and it won't be a, an easy task here for the Tar Heels because they're playing the number two ranked team in the country Gonzaga is excellent and they're so balanced on offense it's really amazing nine new faces on this Gonzaga team and you'd have to say that Mark Few's crew is ahead of schedule this is an excellent offensive team that does a great job of spreading it around six guys averaging in double figures it'd be seven if we round up from Ryan Woolridge's 9.8 points per game that's really a remarkable balance for this team on the offensive end. Let's round up. Let's round up and give them seven. I think we should. The students have been revved up for hours getting ready for this game and really a, a lot longer than that. No team in the country has a longer home winning streak. And uh, I think, you know, maybe up until this week when Cole Anthony was listed as out for this game, you could make a case this is the most highly anticipated game in the history of this program at home for Gonzaga. K.J. Smith will start in this place, the former walk-on. And we would have tipped already, but there is some clock or even horn issue. So they're trying to get that worked out. They're not going to be able to hear a horn in here anyway. Yeah, might as well just go. <laughs> All the anticipation, weeks and months and even years since Carolina announced that they were going to come play this game. And now we're ready to go. From the kennel. Brooks and Petrusha. The opening tip controlled by the Tar Heels, so they'll have the ball first tonight. One bit of good news. Leaky Black healthy enough to give it a go. He started. Yeah, Leaky Black has had a foot problem throughout the course of the year and then his other foot he had a toe issue and a beautiful move by Garrison Brooks little drop step immediately North Carolina getting the ball inside and that's the strength of this team with Garrison Brooks and Armando Baycott the freshman. I mean, you figure for the Tar Heels have any chance those big guys are going to have to play awfully well. Petrushev with all the balance he's been the leading scorer and he gets the first bucket for the Zags. Terrific job by Gonzaga to answer by going inside to Philip Petrushev, who did a really nice job with single coverage on the freshman Armando Baycott of taking him into the middle. And then watch his right leg. This is a drop step. Throws that right leg behind him and is able to get to the basket and more importantly, get fouled and finish the play. That was a big time play by Philip Petrushev. Just a sophomore sort of learn behind Rui Hachimura, Brandon Clark, all the big guys they had on last year's Gonzaga team. He has taken a huge leap this year. Gonzaga playing man-to-man. -man. And they can pack it in because this is not a very good perimeter shooting team for North Carolina. Baycott throws up an air ball for the freshman Armando Baycott. That's now two of his last 15. He went two of 14 in the Wofford game in Carmichael Arena, Carolina. Petrusha fell down, but he got bumped. That's a tough call for Armando Baycott. It didn't look like he did anything. It's just that Petrusha fell down. And Roy Williams is going to have to make a change right away. Now, there's a little contact with that left arm. I'm not sure that caused anything, but that certainly justifies a call there. Yeah, you have to call that. And that's kind of the nightmare scenario for the Tar Heels. They're not that deep anyway. One of their most important, talented young big men. A minute into the game is on the bench with two fouls. Now that's an experience issue. 
They went right at Baycott, got him out of the game. But Carolina just will have to go smaller. Black with the pull-up, nicely done. And that's something North Carolina has been missing. Leaky Black grabbed the rebound, took it all the way himself with a short jumper and shot that one with confidence, which has not been the norm. Corey Kispert answers. Kispert was able to just roll right into that shot without a lot of resistance. Not great communication by North Carolina defensively, and Kispert's got to look to take even more shots for this Gonzaga team. Woolridge goes all the way with his left hand, he finishes. And nobody stopped the basketball. That's a great play by Ryan Woolridge to exploit the defense. If you're not going to stop the ball, take it all the way. Black inside the three-point arc at that time. Here come the Zags. Ryan Woolridge, he's one of the faster players in the country. That three is good from Kispert. That's a shot that last year, Dave, I'm not sure Kispert would have taken because he had a hand up. And now he's got to take those shots. Those are good shots. He's 6'7". He can knock those down. He's got the ball after the Gonzaga steal, and he gives it right back. Kispert can shoot it, catch and shoot from deep. He can also pull up. He's got a varied offensive game. KJ Smith, that was a pretty good look. Shot doesn't go. Ayayi, he goes all the way, but that shot was rejected. Boy, awfully easy for Gonzaga to get all the way to the basket. Just a, a superior defensive play at the end to save it. Black is wide open, but he missed it. And North Carolina not getting any offensive rebound opportunities. The offensive rebounds, that's been their offense this year. Their offensive struggle, what success they've had, has largely come on the offensive glass. There's Kispert. But even with offensive rebounding, uh, North Carolina's not been able to convert. They've gotten a lot of offensive rebounds, but not a lot of conversions off those boards. Now take a look at Corey Kispert right here. You can see him coming off the, he'll be coming off the screen. Little dribble handoff. And not a good job when he gets that ball screen to hedge out and Leaky Black a little bit, a little bit late. And he was able to just waltz into that shot. Carolina keeps the ball. Jeremiah Francis in for the first time, the inbounder. Tilly and Tilly, the big man. That's a five second violation. He couldn't get it in. Just well defended. Gonzaga switching screens and exchanges and France has had nobody to throw it to just not a sense of urgency for North Carolina to get the ball in bounds and that's honestly that's where you miss a having your point guard there North Carolina does not have a traditional point guard in the game that has played a lot of minutes and you can bet that Gonzaga is going to try to bring the pressure to make those guards uncomfortable Drew Timmy the freshman that's a blocking foul and Timmy's going to go to the free throw line but Gonzaga does such a great job of getting in and out of ball screen situations quickly. Their big guys sprint to screens. They either slip it or set the screen and roll quickly or pop quickly and really puts the defense at a, at a disadvantage. And Timmy did a really nice job there of getting in and out of that screening action to be really difficult to guard. He misses the free throw. He's made a great first impression his first couple months as part of this program. He's coming off a seven-point game at Arizona at the McHale Center. And he's got a lot of confidence. He's a worker and really learning to, to work at an even higher rate because you have to at Gonzaga. This, this is a program that now it used to be built on offense years and years ago. Now it's built on a complete game, toughness, rebounding defense. In the corner, Pierce for three. No good. He struggled with his shot of late. Yeah, the transfer from William & Mary just can't get anything to go. Admont Gilder could not finish. And here come the Tar Heels in transition. Good pass. Extra pass. Pierce will try again. This time it goes down. Boy, excellent passing by North Carolina to get the ball in transition from one side to the other. As you said, made the extra pass, but it was the right pass. But Gonzaga does a great job of getting the ball from side to side, then playing inside out. They got single coverage, and that's just big time offensive basketball. Drew Timmy gets the nice little jump hook. That's beautiful to watch. Here's 
Francis, who had hardly played not just this year, but in several years until recently. Now they're leaning on him, freshman from the state of Ohio. Played high school ball with Sterling Manley, the junior that has not played much and won't play the rest of the year with a knee injury. Well, these two teams certainly have shared history. You don't have to go back very far. 2017, the national title game. We'll remember that one when we come back. Dave Fleming, Jay Billis back here in Spokane. All the success over the last couple decades for the Zags. Still only one of those. Their only Final Four appearance in program history ended up in the national title game. And who was their opponent, of course? The Tar Heels. It was an excellent national championship game. It, it was a great game because it was so competitive. Neither team shot the ball as well as they were capable, but all the big-time players in that ball game, led by Joel Berry, who was the Final Four MVP that season as North Carolina won the championship over Gonzaga. But it's really remarkable when you think about it, what Gonzaga has accomplished uh, and what Mark Few has accomplished here at Gonzaga and building this into a, a national powerhouse. I mean, I remember years ago asking Mark Few, you know, are you going to leave here to go somewhere where you can win a national championship? And, and he said, I think we can win one here. And it seemed it seemed like a pipe dream and not only is it not a pipe dream they can win it this year they're good enough to win it this year even with all the changes they've had all the new faces it, you know in this year where there's a lot of flux in college basketball maybe nobody's overpowering and nobody's yet great uh gonzag is as good as anybody they're as good as anybody francis misses the second of the two free throws so a two point game, Gonzaga with the lead. First five minutes plus from the kennel. And this has not been a perfect start for North Carolina, but it's been a pretty darn good one. Trushev going one on one and just elevates, but missed the shot badly over Brooks. Really good job defensively by Garrison Brooks, who's an excellent defender to stay between Petrushev and the basket and make him shoot a tough shot. Yeah, good little look for his teammate. That's Christian Keeling. They need offense from him. Transferred in from Charleston Southern as a grad transfer. He was all Big South. And Christian Keeling scored close to 18, 1,800 points at Charleston Southern. He needs to get untracked offensively for Carolina. Yeah, even at a little bit lower level of play. He averaged 19 points a game last year. Good cut from Kispert, but that shot was challenged and knocked away. Mark Few wanted a foul as Justin Pierce was able to challenge that. Pierce is a good athlete, good fake there. Pierce gets the bounce pass from Brooks and lays it in. Justin Pierce looks like a different player in this game. He's made strong moves and confident moves, and confidence has been a little bit of an issue early on in this season for him. Trushev faced, missed that one. Give credit again to Garrison Brooks. He's making the catch a little bit more difficult, and he's bodying up Philip Petrushev. Pierce, you called him confident. That was a confident attempt. The rebound knocked away, and the Tar Heels keep possession. Long shot, long rebound, and North Carolina a little bit more alert to that long rebound. That play off the elbow for Carolina. Robinson got a little opening. That one rattled out. You know, North Carolina, can't, even though those are good shots, they can't fall in love with the jump shot. They've got to get the ball inside. Gilder, on the other hand, he loves the jump shot. And Gilder's coming off an excellent game against Arizona. He had 13 points, went 4 of 4 from three-point range. Great win for the Zags down at McHale. That jumper from Christian Keeling. Christian Keeling, I mean, I, I don't know when the last time, if at all, he got two shots to go down in a row this season. Runner from Ryan Woolridge, how nice was that? Boy, it's fun to watch two teams get up and down the floor, isn't it? Free-flowing, good pace. Jeremiah Francis looks like he's limping a little bit. That's not good news for a guy who's been so injured so many times. In fact, he may be asking out of the game. Meantime, really, a bucket really nice a job. Yeah, really nice job by North Carolina to get the ball inside. And we had talked about the fact that they'd settled for some jumpers, but got the ball to Brooks. There's a little bit of a little bit of a gamble there by Woolridge and took himself out of the play and weak side help a little bit slow getting there. Garrison Brooks took advantage of it. The guys played a lot of games, a lot of minutes for Carolina over the last few years. And how much responsibility is on Garrison Brooks' shoulders this year with a young big guy in Armando Baycott, uh, Baycott on, the, on the bench with two fouls. 
you know, he's going to have to play. He might have to play a ton of minutes in this game. And look who's back on the floor. Baycott with those two fouls. Maybe just buy a couple minutes for Brooks. I would be shocked if Gonzaga doesn't go right at Baycott. Yeah, give Roy Williams credit. A lot of coaches would keep a guy with two fouls out for the entire half. But I think you're playing the playing the best defense on your best players when you don't put them in the game. If they're on the bench, you know they're not going to be able to help you at all. And if, if North Carolina is going to win in a really tough environment, Roy Williams has to have his best players on the floor for as many minutes as he can get. Kispert for three. Good. Wow. That's just too easy. Good defense from Gilder to cut off Black. Still looking for somewhere to go with the ball, and Gilder just took it away. Well, that was just too close a quarter to be able to throw the ball inside and feed the post. When you don't have the angle, when you don't have good spacing, you're asking for a turnover. North Carolina got it. Petrushev just went right to the rim. And Brandon Huffman did not hold his ground, and Petrushev took advantage of it. And Huffman in the game right now to give Garrison Brooks a break before they get to the next time out. Wow, what a nice break for the Tar Heels. That looked like a turnover waiting to happen. It turns into a bucket. Oh, what a pass. Petrushev up ahead. What a play by Joel Ayayi. Beautiful pass. Harrison Brooks didn't rest for long. He's up off the bench. He's coming to the scorer's table. Can't afford to have him out. Baycott picked up his dribble. Keeling goes back door. No whistle. Baycott offensive rebound and missed the putback. That's what kept happening against Wofford. Ayayi in the open court. That is a blocking foul. Well, it's been a fun game to watch so far. First. Almost 10 minutes from Spokane. Roy Williams chasing down his coaching idol in Dean Smith. We'll talk about that after this. I'm not the coach that Coach Smith was. How about them Eels? They are the national champions. Three times a charm for Roy Williams. They're singing nothing could be finer than the title for Carolina. Roy Williams and Dean Smith shouldn't be in the same sentence. And I'm not being humble. I honestly, truly believe that. But I'm a copier. You know, I copy most of the things that he did. Dean Smith is the winningest coach in the history of college basketball. Win number 800 for Roy Williams. 400 wins at North Carolina. I think he's the best I've ever been around on the basketball court and he's far better off the court. I think Coach Williams is being a little humble. No, there's no question. I mean, look, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Roy Williams is a better coach than Dean Smith, but I will tell you this. In my, in my judgment, he is Dean Smith's equal. I mean, Roy Williams is one of the great, greatest coaches in the history of this game, as was Dean Smith. They're, they're both worthy of you know, sort of Mount Rushmore inclusion and would be in that discussion. Totally agree. Tilly, nice little move there, and he scored the bucket, plus he got fouled. Killian Tilly is a great basketball player. He's battled injuries. He is nowhere near 100%, but he can say he sets and slips this little screen. Garrison Brooks comes over and plays great defense, and still he makes a terrific and difficult shot. He can pick and pop and knock down a 27-foot shot. He can put the ball in the deck. He is an exquisite passer, and only injury has taken him away from being one of the uh, uh, one of the handful of the best players in the country. This guy is a big-time talent. I think part of the goal for Gonzaga this year during the regular season, win as many games as they can, win their league, all that stuff, but get him as healthy as he can be for the end of the year. Yes. And a little one, two, two, three-quarter court pressure, and Gonzaga turns over North Carolina. And Gonzaga turns it into a bucket. This is where not having your point guard is a huge issue. How are you going to handle this kind of pressure? Good pass. 
Robinson. I thought he could have shot it. He didn't. Smith down the lane. Smith got rejected, but they'll call a foul. Gonzaga out of last time out decided to put more pressure on North Carolina. Make the Tar Heels uncomfortable. Make some non-handlers or shaky handlers handle the ball more often. That's the second foul against Petrushev. So it looks like after this first free throw, he'll be coming out. Boy, what a... What an amazing happening for KJ Smith to come into this situation in North Carolina. He started the University of Pacific, came to North Carolina as a walk on. His father, Kenny Smith, one of the all time great players in North Carolina history. And now, because of injury, he's having to start in this environment. You know, his second start in a row, he's starting against Wofford and put up seven points, four assists. Tilly, no good. Boy, look at that range. I mean, such separation off that pick and pop. So difficult for any big guy to guard. The shot sure looked good. Pierce will launch from way outside. And Gonzaga just packing it in so they can't throw the ball inside to Garrison Brooks. Killed her three. A good box out by K.J. Smith. He boxed out Woolridge. And everybody's got a rebound in this game. Smith, well, there was a whistle before the shot, so no shot. I mean, K.J. Smith, he's the one Carolina player who's actually played in this building. You mentioned UOP, part of the West Coast Conference. He came here as a freshman and played a game. Didn't score, but played like 15 minutes. So at least he has a little bit of experience playing bit. in the kennel. A little bit. It's not like the Carolina players don't play in some great, crazy, loud environments. No. They do. I'll tell you, this, this is different. This is a really difficult environment. It's got a Cameron Indoor Stadium feel as far as how loud it is. And you got to give North Carolina credit for coming into this environment on the road. Not many coaches would sign up for this. Brooks elevated and missed the shot. Gonzaga making Carolina shoot tough twos. The IE goes all the way and had his shot blocked by Robinson. Good defense. Scramble drill and Gonzaga has it. Woolridge. Nice dish to Timmy. That was not a great effort from Andrew Playtech. Kispert was trailing. Woolridge knew he was there. This Gonzaga team, man, they play hard and play well. That last play before Kispert's transition shot, get a loose ball, pass it out, make all the right passes, shot fake, get it inside. That's beautiful basketball that Gonzaga's playing right now. Just beautiful basketball. He's earning those ovations. Man, is it loud in the kettle tonight. What? Gonzaga has nine new faces on this roster, yet they play like they've been together forever. The loose ball down on the floor, and look at how this ball moves. Ryan Woolridge, the shot fake, drive, draw the defense, gets it to Drew Timmy for the easy finish. Ryan Woolridge has five assists, not a single turnover in this game. The transfer, the grad transfer from North Texas just makes a big time play. And this is such a fun team to watch because they share the ball, they move without the ball and they play unselfishly and make the right pass in most occasions. This is a, a really good basketball team that's getting better and better. And they're just scratching the surface of how good they can be. Keeling on the attack. That shot was deflected, but a nice throwdown from Garrison Brooks. Anytime you go for a block shot, that can open up the offensive glass. So you have to rotate down and box out. That's the one of the few errors that Gonzaga's made by not doing that. To your point about the ball movement for Gonzaga, their last turnover came 21 possessions ago, and it's their only turnover of this first half. They have eight assists, one turnover as a team. Well, one of the reasons, I mean, they've been very good with the ball, but North Carolina's got to put some more pressure on Gonzaga and force them to turn it over, because they're not going to do it without being forced. They're not going to make any unforced errors. 
is a very skilled basketball team at every posi uh, position. Baycott got cut off by Timmy. Got and tipped. It did get tipped. There's only five seconds on the clock. They got to hurry. Smith knows it, so from a long way out, no good. Extra pass again. Ulrich off the glass. Just so many players that can pass the ball, put it on the deck, make perimeter shots. They space you out, and they get in and out of their actions really quickly. You know, years ago, Gonzaga used to run flex, and they ran some motion. Then they ran a combination of it. They called it flotion, flex motion. And now they run like these multiple action ball screens side to side, and they get in and out of it so quickly. It's really hard to guard. It's beautiful to watch. Seven players have played in the game for Gonzaga. Seven players have scored. That was a great defensive play by K.J. Smith. We give K.J. Smith a lot of credit. He is fighting his tail off. Carolina needed that. Trying to hang in this game. Builder came up way short. Probably not the shot that Gonzaga wanted there. Out of bounds. Off of Keeling. KJ Smith, who started out at Modern Day High School playing for Gary McKnight out in California, then wound up at IMG Academy. I don't think when the season started that KJ expected to be in the starting lineup until the maybe the last game of the season. And you can see he is just gassed because he has played so hard. And you got to give him a lot of credit. He is really fighting out there. Where's number 30 like his dad did? In Chapel Hill. Good pass. Remember, Baycott's got the two fouls, but he played good defense there. Good news that Francis is back in the game because he did not look right when he went to the bench. Keeling stepped out of bounds. Well, it's that time of year. Bowl season begins on Friday. A couple games for you. Buffalo and Charlotte, your hometown team in the uh, Bahamas Bowl, 2 Eastern on ESPN, right here on ESPN2, Utah State, Kent State, the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl. It all starts on Friday. Kispert with a foul. Corey Kispert is just a big, strong guard that I think really needs to be even more assertive as an offensive player. You know, he's so unselfish. He doesn't take a lot of challenge shots when there's a hand up. But I think he can he can take and make those challenge shots and needs to take even more of them. He, he's a he's a big time player. He's got such a, a great feel for the game and such a competitor. Ayayi steal and to Kispert on the run out. When Gonzaga played against Arizona in Tucson, the Zags got in some foul trouble, and Corey Kispert wound up playing the four spot and did a great job guarding Arizona's big guys. Really did a fantastic job. That guy is a baller. Might even be playing better in this game. He has had a heck of a first half. That was a little bit out of control for Carolina. Yeah, Kispert had 18 points and eight rebounds against Arizona. And he has been so assertive offensively in this one. And not that his teammates don't know it and he doesn't know it, but he can he can do this in every game. I mean, he, he's an All-America caliber player. He's got 16 in the first 16 minutes here tonight. So you can use him in ball screens. He can slip out of it. Uh, yeah, he picked up his dribble there and shouldn't have. And he's a another terrific player. They got a lot of them, don't they? They're going to hang 50 on Carolina in the first half.
They sure look like it, don't they? A team that can win it all. And the students, I give the students credit. It's winter break. They came back here to be here for this game. Uh, Some a game of them didn't that, leave. They went skiing. Well, I was told they went skiing. <laughs> okay, so that changes my view a little bit. Uh, I mean, I, you could argue this is the most anticipated game in the history of the kennel. Gonzaga plays anybody anywhere, but so many of their great regular season matchups have come in those tournament situations non-conference neutral site type games not many teams have had the guts to come here and Carolina did it took some guts uh, yeah he with the shot clock winding down got the shot up Kispert hustling all over the place almost got the ball but the Tar Heels have it Carolina came with its scrambled trap out of the last time out Gonzaga did not handle it well to be able to get the shot they wanted and good attack in transition by North Carolina to get all the way to the rim. But meanwhile, on the other end, Gonzaga runs the floor and then misses the layup. Petrushev, he's been a little off with his shooting in the first half. Well, he's been challenged and he's not made a couple of those right near the basket. He's got to knock those down. And then he lets Garrison Brooks catch it too deep in there. And you, any good post player is going to score on you if you let him catch it with two feet in the paint right in front of the rim. Well, a big few minutes for the Tar Heels just to feel like they got a chance going to the locker room, this time a foul. Garrison Brooks, the junior from Alabama, you know, catching it right in the middle of the lane with Petrushev on his hip, and he's too good of a player to let him get that kind of position. You have to meet him early. But Brooks does such a good job running the floor, as does Petrushev. You know, he gets down on the offensive end, gets that early post. And there's such good spacing because Gonzaga can shoot it so well. You know, aside from from Sean Farnham, Jones and for free pizza at the Davenport, both Sean and, and I think Seth Greenberg are exactly right. Like Especially this year when there's not been an overpowering team and we don't know that an overpowering great team is going to emerge. Gonzaga is as good as anyone. And as long as they stay healthy, and that's a big if. Uh, they absolutely can win a national championship. I mean, they're playing tonight without Anton Watson, their freshman, really talented player who's got a shoulder injury, or, or this team would, would have even more depth. Uh, being number one this year has not been a good thing. You have four different teams lose as AP number one. First time that had happened before January 1st ever. Number two's 10 and 0. Two's have been great. <laughs> <laughs> and Gonzaga, Gonzaga's playing great here in the first half. Boy, really good communication by Gonzaga, switching, staying in front, and forcing a tough shot. But Francis able to make a tough shot. Jeremiah Francis, Woolridge had the ball stripped away, and the Tar Heels come away with it. Robinson for three. Too strong. And Carolina needs a few of those to go down. What a play. Boy, these guys are going after it, man. That was awesome to watch. Anthony Harris had it deflected. Carolina cannot settle for jumpers. They've got to get to the rim. Pierce trying to get there. He got fouled. There has been tremendous effort shown by both teams in this game. Watch Kispert here. Diving on the floor to knock that ball to a teammate. Couldn't quite get it to a Yayi who needed to come back to the ball. You know, you can't just run down the floor. You got to come back to the ball and get it and then go. Boy, Gonzaga makes every catch difficult. Leaky Black came up way short. Well, Leaky Black adds some size and length. He guard multiple positions. He's going to be a really good player. Tilly was fouled by Pierce. Yeah, Tilly, we talked about what a terrific passer that Killian Tilly is. And Mark Few, we were talking about that yesterday, and he said that he really thinks that his volleyball uh, ability, his volleyball background has led to him being a good passer. He, he passes some, some balls like he's a setter uh, in volleyball. His dad is the coach of the national team in France. His mom was a great volleyball player, an Olympian. He comes from a volleyball family. And he, he can. He's got great hands. He doesn't set the ball as well as I do. I'm a much better setter than he is. 
you come from a volleyball family too. Well, my sister was a great volleyball player. She teach you this? No, I'm just a natural okay. talent. I mean, no. that's a fantastic set. And then he sets it right into the bucket. I mean, are you kidding me? I would play libero for any NCAA ba uh, volleyball team this year. No question. You're, you're, you're not the libero. You're a middle blocker, an outside hitter. Don't give me that lumbering middle blocker nonsense. <laughs> I'm a leader at the libero spot. Your sister's going to be calling you after this game. Good steal. Anthony Harris off and running. Kind of an awkward layup. Got the foul. They did call a foul. The challenge by Ayayi was a foul, but really alert play on the drive to step in and not just be there as a defender, but go after the ball. Uh, Anthony Harris, similar to Jeremiah Francis, had been hurt and had not played, had not practiced much at all until the last couple of weeks. His first game was at Virginia. He had four points in that one. He was a an AAU teammate of Armando Baycott when he was in high school. Well, you got to give credit to, to both, you know, uh, Harris and, and Francis. They have not been able to practice much and have been thrust into play and have really done a good job. I mean, they're, they're, they're not, you, know, you can't expect too much. and They're not going to play or replace Cole Anthony by themselves. But to be able to give Roy Williams some quality minutes and to fight as hard as they do, you know, North Carolina, this is not going to be a great North Carolina team. But they are far better than they've played, and they've really fought in this one. You have to admire the way they've come into this, this difficult place to play, and they've played really hard. Kilder in and out. And the Tar Heels have a chance. They're down nine. They can't hold for the final shot, but they have a chance to cut into this Gonzaga lead. Yeah, they're not going to be able to go two for one, so they need to get the best possible shot they can get right now. Harris attacks on the baseline. I don't know if that was a shot or a pass, but it worked. Well, a really good play at the end of it by Brandon Huffman to catch and finish and not travel. Well, this is a really big defensive possession for North Carolina. Can they get a stop here and go down, go into halftime, only seven down? Well, it looked like Gonzaga was going to hang over 50 on the Tar Heels in this first half. Ayayi three, way short. Carolina couldn't get the final shot off, but I'm impressed with the way the Tar Heels played. They're hanging in there against the number two ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs, Kevin, Sean, Seth, in studio. All right, back here at the kennel where it is rocking tonight. Number two, Gonzaga hosting the Tar Heels of Carolina 44-37 as we get ready to start the second half. Corey Kispert was tremendous. Well, Gonzaga shooting 50% in that first half overall in large part because Corey Kispert was six of eight from the field, knocked down three threes, and he really did it in every conceivable way. Putting the ball in the deck, pulling up off the dribble, off the dribble handoff and ball screen, running the court and getting the finish in transition. And he played so hard at both ends of the floor, diving on the floor for a loose ball. Shot goes up, ball on the floor, he's on the floor. Whether he comes up with it or not, his effort was absolutely supreme. And then on the other end for North Carolina, the Tar Heels only shot 40% in that first half, but Garrison Brooks was terrific. The little, little on big screen to get him in the low post. He was very good in the paint, had 11 points in the first half. He was five of seven from the field. The rest of the Tar Heels, 10 of 30. And if there was one area where where I thought Gonzaga needed to do a better job, and that was protecting its paint. You know, this is not a, a, a good perimeter shooting North Carolina team. So they've got to do a better job of packing it in and making it difficult, difficult for North Carolina to score in the blue. Are we fully confident that the rail behind us is going to hold up? I'm telling you, the, the, the way these students jump up and down, I am, uh, the structural integrity of this building is impressive. It's uh, being tested tonight. Yeah, I've, I've been uh, been on edge uh, most of the night. Uh, it's a tremendous showing, which, of course, we expected. From the fans here of the Zags, first half numbers. Kisper with the big half, Brooks as well. Carolina, not offensive rebounding the way that they usually do, but spreading the minutes, 11 different players with three plus minutes, plus their bench. They got 18 points off their bench. That has been a problem for them. Carolina has fought throughout this game uh, to remain in it and get it under 10. I mean, 
it looked like Gonzaga had a chance to move this lead out. You know, they had 42 points, I think, with about 351 to go, and only scored two points. Gonzaga did the rest of the half. Carolina coming out in a 2-3 zone, and, and as if it's not difficult enough with personnel, Brandon Robinson will not play in the remainder of the game. He is not feeling well, and Carolina has ruled him out for the remainder of the game. So number three, Andrew Playtech is on the floor as the second half gets started. Ayayi from a long way out. No good, and the rebound goes off of the Zags. You know, and because Gonzaga is an excellent perimeter shooting team, you don't question pulling up for perimeter shots against the zone. But even Gonzaga can't settle for perimeter shots against the zone. A little box set right now for North Carolina. Really good job by Yai to jump into that passing lane, take the lane away from Andrew Playtech off that cut. A.J. Smith, a little hesitation. I thought he could have taken a layup. He got it to Baycott, who bricked it. By the way, we got more college hoops for you. Look who was catching up with Coach Cal from Las Vegas earlier this afternoon. Utah and number six, Kentucky, follows us from Vegas. Rematch of the 1998 NCAA championship game. Two great teams. Yeah, oh, especially. Uh, Utah had a terrific team under Rick Majerus back then. And you know, Utah's a really young basketball team this year. They start two freshmen, three sophomores. Surprisingly, they're probably younger than Kentucky. That hasn't happened very often. Not, not under John Calipari. But I'm not, I'm not sure you're going to find many point guards playing better than Ashton Hagens is playing right now for Kentucky. Especially his last two ball games. He's been excellent. He's averaging over seven assists per game on the season. But he was fantastic against Georgia Tech. He used... John Calipari used him in the middle of the zone as a playmaker and behind the zone instead of just out top. And he made some really spectacular plays in that game against the Yellow Jackets. I think Roy Williams trying to steal a few possessions. And Baycott, who just picked up a third personal foul. So trying to get Huffman some minutes. Baycott played some with two fouls in the first half, and Huffman rejects it at the rim. Boy, what a block by Brandon Huffman. He's such a big body. And Carolina had gone back to man-to-man. -to -man. I'm not sure everybody realized it right at the start of that possession. Huffman with the catch from Smith. Gonzaga has to process that every time K.J. Smith drives that he is not driving to finish. He's driving to pass. So they got to make him finish. What a play by Garrison Brooks to jump that ball screen. That was really well done. Tar Heels trying to hang in this one. Smith will shoot the three. Huffman playing hard. He got fouled from behind by Tilly. Boy, it's so difficult for North Carolina. They just cannot get a perimeter shot to fall. And that means that the defense is going to contract even more. It's going to be more difficult to get the ball to the rim. So they've got to find other ways to score. Offensive rebounds. Score in transition, score off their defense. You saw Coach Williams with K.J. Smith. You wonder if part of that message is one of these times you're going to have to finish down low. That's a finish from Garrison Brooks. The Tar Heels cut into the lead. They're down only five. Boy, Mark Few cannot be happy with his defense. Allowing a middle drive and then an easy drop off to Garrison Brooks for a dunk. Chushev who struggled to shoot the ball, gets it to go with a foul. Petrushev gets position down low on Brandon Huffman, and then Huffman gives him too much space, and then Petrushev able to get right into his body and get into the restricted area, and that's just way too easy. Wait, Petrushev's got a great skill level, can play facing up, play with his back to the basket. He's just getting better and better. I mean, I say he struggled with his shot. He's four and nine, not yeah. terrible. Yeah, he's not played great in this one, but he's had a he's had a really good start to the season. Is my point, and I think as he gets a little bit tougher, and and I think he can get a little bit tougher. He's a terrific player. Rebound knocked into the hands of Gilder and the Zags. Kispert catch and shoot three, good. <laughs> What a tremendous find by Admon Gilder, the transfer from Texas A&M in that last transition play for Gonzaga. 
He dribbled to the middle of the floor because he knew he could find Kispert and found him for a rhythm jumper. That was beautiful. Play tech helped the Tar Heels come away with the ball. Here's Francis on the attack. I've been impressed by him, and they're going to wave oh. off the basket and say foul on the floor. That that is not a good call. That that basket should count. Well, Francis can't believe it. Well, and that has to be a continuation. Yeah, that's that's a it? basket. That was definitely a basket. So that's a break for the Zags. Playtech. Got Petrushev to fall down. They got away with a little push. Got a mismatch inside. Gilders on Huffman. Huffman's got to post him. Instead, he'll set the screen. Francis for three. Huffman offensive rebound. Tried to dunk it in and missed it. Looked like he got fouled. There was contact. But give Huffman credit. He is making some effort plays out there and giving quality minutes. Yeah, he's been very quiet. Throws up a lob. And Petrusia got hammered. I'm not sure that Huffman didn't lose some teeth there. Man, he got he took one right in the chops. Now the other end when Huffman gets this ball and goes up, that's a that's a foul. There was contact right there on his arm as he was going up. That's a foul. Come on, man. That's on ridiculous. His, on his arm, on his face, on his head. That is ridiculous. And then he took more of a shot on this end. Yeah, there's definitely a foul there on Huffman, but he <laughs> he took the brunt of that foul, yeah. right? He took it right in the chops. Boy, he's played hard. Man. Boy, that's one where you count your chicklets after it's all over. Look, he's, he's hit. Yeah. How many I got? Is it 32? They're checking. One of two from the free throw line. I mean, Carolina's playing hard. They are playing hard. And that's one, one of the saving graces. I know it's not been easy for Carolina to go through this with all the injuries, and they've not played well or shot well, but they have played hard. Gilder in transition scores. Admont Gilder is a, a terrific addition to this team. He can score, he can defend. A mature presence out on the floor. That pass he made to Kispert in transition was a big time play. Gonzaga switching ball screens out top, changing the coverage. Good pass from Playtech and Leaky Black missed it. They're getting wide open shots, they just can't knock them down. And that's deflating. That's, that can really put so much pressure on your defense to get stop after stop. Well, doesn't Kispert do a great job with shot fakes and ball fakes? He does. That one goes down. Not lacking confidence, number 11 for the Zags. Nor should he. Didn't play a lot last year, but he's got some game. That's a turnover. Admon Gilder is a talented basketball player that has come in as a grad transfer. Watch how he keeps his eyes up. What a great pass to Kispert in transition. Big time play. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. Following our game, Utah and Kentucky Zags maybe trying to pull away from the Tar Heel. Carolina's playing hard, hanging in there, tough environment, short-handed team, no Cole Anthony. But a 12-3 run as the Zags up by 14. Yeah, Carolina just can't make a perimeter shot. And that's really been the difficulty all year long. A little ball screen continuity right now for North Carolina for Gonzaga. And they just Timmy just slips it and gets right to the basket. The side-to-side -side action. They're going to lift you up and break you down with how quickly they get into it. If you don't stay between your man and the basket, he's slipping it. And then Gilder just took it right from Leaky Black. Really the difference in the game has been Gonzaga's ability to sustain. They can sustain it over longer periods of time than North Carolina can. The Tar Heels have played hard, but you're wondering when are they going to run out of gas. It's just not a very good pass. Leaky Black needs to go after that harder. Gilder went after it harder than he did, and as a result, got a bucket. 
You know, Gilder's playing hurt. Ryan Woolridge playing hurt. And uh, even Killian Tilly, I mean, he's nowhere near 100%. After every game, his knee is swollen up. But he still gives maximum effort. There's a switch of the exchange out top. Francis against the double team. Pierce puts it in. When you go after the block shot, that is going to open up the offensive glass. And Justin Pierce is a very good offensive rebounder. He's averaging about two and a half offensive boards a game. And for a time, Pierce had as many offensive rebounds as defensive. Foul against the Tar Heels. Well, we got a doubleheader on ESPN and the ESPN app on Friday in the NBA. The Mavs and the 76ers at 8 Eastern. And here out west, the Warriors will host the Pelicans. That's coming up on Friday. It'll stream live on the app. A lot of the young Zags players in the NBA are playing very well right now. Rui Achimura, who's going to miss a few games, banged up, but, but has played well. Brandon Clark from Memphis played really well. Yeah, Brandon Clark. I mean, that team that Mark Few had last year, I mean, was 33 and 4. And went to the Elite Eight with a legit chance to win the whole thing. But boy, they lost so much. You know, Josh Perkins, Zach Norbell Jr. And then, of course, Hachimura and you know, Jeremy Jones, too. Yep. Harris Walk got away with it. Yep. Keeling. Kisper got his hands on it. Carolina will keep the ball. How about Sabonis? How good of a player he's become? Yeah, Demonis Sabonis playing with Indiana. I mean, he's a. Do you ever see his dad play when he was in his prime? Not just with Portland. Maybe on YouTube. I mean, yeah, you're younger, but man, when he played for the Soviet national team, Arvidas Sabonis for a time was the, the best basketball player in the world. I mean, probably in the late 80s, you know, 89, 90, you could make a, a strong argument he was the best player in the world. In a way, it's a shame we didn't get to see him in the NBA at the height of his powers. Harris three is good. Boy, that is a, a big shot for North Carolina just for confidence to be able to stretch you a little bit. As you said, some of those have to go down. They're getting a lot of looks. Some of them have to go in. And you have to keep taking them. You can't pass up those open shots. Tilly, there's nowhere to go. Shot clock down to five. Pick and pop. Tilly for three. Good. Are you kidding me? Man, that is big time. And it's not just the shot, it's the separation he gets. He, he must have popped 15 feet from that ball screen action. How do you guard that? You don't. Keeling through contact. He'll go to the free throw line. Killian Tilly is the best shooter on this basketball team. Watch this little pick and pop. He slips it, and everybody stays with the ball. Harris has to try to get back, but he's 6'11 with a beautiful stroke and, and range that could go back three steps from that. But the amount of separation he gets makes that really difficult to guard. And then if you're late, get, he can shot fake, put it on the deck because he's so skilled, and he's a great passer. I mean, he's a, he a big-time talent. By the way, Killian Tilly, we, we, you did the uh, 94 feet with him today. Yes, we tried to convert it to meters, but he couldn't do the math. That's a little tease. We're going to show it to you after our next break. I was disappointed in him. Well, I, I think he showed himself to be the second best volleyball player on the floor behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Another little pick and pop with the short roll and the beautiful touch. That is a difficult shot that Killian Tilly just made. That one almost stolen away. Good job by Gonzaga to double team Garrison Brooks, but on the broken play. If it weren't for Garrison Brooks' scoring, where would North Carolina be right now? Ooh. He's had a terrific game. Garrison Brooks grew up in Alabama. He's an Auburn fan. Not an, Al not an Alabama fan. He's an Auburn fan. Okay. Well, Killian Tilly just got called for the foul, but he knows we've been talking about him. When we come back, 94 feet. With the native of France with the big smile, Killian Tilly. I'm speaking French to him right there. <laughs> Ninety-four feet with Gonzaga's Killian Tilly. When did you first come to the United States? 
Uh, my freshman year, uh, yeah, went to Gonzaga. And why, why Gonzaga from France? Uh, just the best uh, international players, I think, and, and big guys. What's the best thing about playing for Mark Few? It's just, you know, it's just a great coach with a kind of Hall of Famer, and he knows a lot about the game, so it's interesting. What do you miss most about France? Family and the, and the food, for sure. The food. What, what, what is your favorite French food? Cheese, uh, bread, baguette. And yeah. what's your favorite American food? Uh, I'll say steak. 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 Yeah. Very nice. All right, this 94 feet, you know how many meters that is? Not really. 28.67. <laughs> I thought the I thought the French were smarter than that. It's really disappointing. I'm sorry. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for uh, this one. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's really simple. You know, it's point three. It's not that it's not that hard of a conversion. You know, we are going to rename it 28.67 meters. Meters. Jay Billis. Yeah. yeah. So, what an honor for Killian Tilly. I, I really didn't know that cheese was a French food. <laughs> Maybe not exclusive to the French, <laughs> but I, they didn't I do invent think they cheese, do it pretty they? well. They do it pretty well. He is a neat kid. Everybody in this program, he's not a kid. He's the one player on both teams who played in that national championship game. Here we go. This team has really good guards. Yai is a good guard that made a he plays both ends of the floor so well. He's got a complete game, very efficient, and a terrific job by Petrushev, and he just shot the gap, took it the other way. But Ryan Woolridge in this game, heck, he's quietly had nine assists, only one turnover to go with six points, four rebounds. Tip is good from Baycott. Like Mark Few looking at his big guys going, wait a minute, how did he get in there and outwork you to get a, a such an easy tip in with nobody laying a body on him? Christian Keeling doing a nice job of denying the ball into an entry position. A little too much dribbling for Gonzaga. When they move the ball, man, they are impossible to guard. Like when they make a pass like that. Yeah, when they play. This is an excellent passing team. And there was probably a little too much bounce in it, but they certainly made a good decision. And Woolridge is having a nice game without having taken a lot of shots. It's an efficient nine assist ball game for him. And Woolridge setting up on the perimeter. Ayayi with the drive and Looking opposite, that ball gets all the way through and just a catch and shoot opportunity for Woolridge, who moved into the vision of the passer. Gonzaga has made their last 10 shots from the floor. 10 in a row. I mean, they're sh shooting 50% from three. You know, with North Carolina unable to, to knock down shots at a an acceptable rate for Roy Williams. It's just too hard to stick with a, an outstanding offensive team. It's not that North Carolina's defense hasn't been good. It's been pretty good. They've had a few breakdowns, but they're just going up against a, an offensive team that is so varied. And they run such good stuff. There's multiple action. You know, they, they run these different actions, and they're not really even. They, they have set plays that they get into, but then they have to make reads. They got big guys who can do that. Yeah, I mean, you got a, a two-man game on the single side. I mean, it was a little bit of an awkward angle to feed the post, but Petrushev got one and one in the post and took advantage of it. Philip Petrushev from Serbia. That's a bucket for the Tar Heels. Now, Christian Keeling has made some positive plays in this game. This looks like he's getting a little bit more confidence out there. Timmy went right by Baycott, who altered the shot. That's some numbers right now for North Carolina. Need to take advantage of it. Francis from the free throw line. So they do. Yeah, that was a, a really smart read by Francis to get in the lane, make that pull-up jumper. He knew he had five on four. It would help Carolina a lot, wouldn't it, if they could get some buckets in transition if Heck you can't yeah. shoot the ball. Anything easy, like scoring off your defense, and, and that means you have to be more aggressive. and Not necessarily gamble, but you know, they've done a good job getting, trying to get out in passing lanes and 
just this is such a good passing team that Gonzaga has. They can take advantage of any little mistake you make. Here comes the double team. Wolvich dribbled around everybody. Kispert floater. And anytime that Gonzaga is making a shot fake, North Carolina is going for it. And that just gets the defense so far off balance when there was. Woolridge did such a good job of dealing with the double team, the trap. And then Ayayi got his defender off balance. That wound up Kispert getting the ball and getting an easy shot as a result. Ayayi does a really nice job of using fakes. So the ball was reversed, and then Ayayi got it to, to Kispert, who made the little, little runner. It's really... It's really impressive to have this many newcomers and new faces that haven't played together and to play at this high of a level offensively. I think where, where Gonzaga is still getting to know each other and where it's showing up that they're, they have new pieces is defensively. They're not a great communicating defensive team yet. And a couple of their guys have to learn to be more vocal. But when they learn to talk and communicate defensively and their defense rises to the level of their offense, I mean, this is, a, this is a, another Final Four team, caliber team that Mark Few and his staff have. Yeah, I mean, you've talked about it tonight. That it, despite all the production and talent that they lost from last year's team, Hachimura and Clark and Norvell Jr. and Perkins and more. Well, those are their four leading scorers from last year's team. Kispert for three. And that with a hand in his face, and he needs to continue to take those shots because Andrew Playtech did not go out to block that shot. And Corey Kisper can shoot over him and other defenders like him without concern. He needs to just keep firing. Well, you mentioned when will Carolina run out of gas? That that light might be on right now. Yeah, I think we've I think we've hit the point. They're still fighting, but it's just so hard to this depleted to be able to withstand this kind of onslaught of offensive basketball. It has been an onslaught. And we're not even done when we're finished here in Spokane. Walton Pash, Don Calipari, Kentucky, Utah, when we're done. When was the last time Calipari couldn't get a word in edgewise? <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, the kids have been going crazy all game long. No different for most nights here at the Kennel. And one of the big reasons why Gonzaga has been one of the very best home teams in all the college hoops over the last decade. Kansas, Kentucky, Belmont, Duke, and the Zags. And when you think of the loudest, most boisterous, toughest places to play, I mean, Rupp, Fog Allen, Cameron, the Kennel, that's, that's a pretty good list. I mean, as far as home court advantage and having a, a hostile crowd, even though they're all really nice people, they're kind of hostile, uh, this, is a, this is as good as any. And I, I think we pointed this out, but it bears repeating that you have to give Roy Williams a lot of credit for coming. I don't know how many you know, big-time major conference programs are willing to come in here and, and play Gonzaga you know, in, in the Lions Den. That is a difficult. This is a difficult spot to put your team, especially when you're when you're shorthanded like this. I mean, think about this. Like, you know, Gonzaga is a 21 straight NCAA tournament appearances. I don't care what league you play in. That's remarkable. And I think it's 11 years in a row that they've had at least one NCAA tournament win. And it's it's uh, I think it's them in Kansas that's done that. That's remarkable. I, I think that's more impressive than the overall consecutive birth streak. They get there and they make something happen when they do. Timeout, Carolina to avoid the turnover. That looked like North Carolina coming out of a timeout with a scramble. Mark Few used a little bit of Roy Williams defense against him. Well, we've never seen those numbers with that man no. on the sidelines in Chapel Hill. No. Roy Williams has never had a team anywhere, whether it's Kansas or, or North Carolina, shoot the ball this poorly over the first 10, 11 games of the season. But you don't want to over overdo this as well. Like Cole Anthony's out. He's an All-America caliber player, uh, a freshman point guard. You know, Brandon Robinson couldn't play the, the, the majority of this game because he's not feeling well. Leaky Black just got back from injury. 
I mean, it, it has been a, a difficult year continuity-wise for North Carolina, but they're still, I mean, this is a team when, when having some players, when they're having their players available, they beat Oregon down in the Bahamas. They beat Notre Dame. They're better than they're playing. They're, it's just not a vintage North Carolina team. Like, it's not a Final Four caliber team. Uh -huh. I think your point is a good one. If they can hang around for the next month until Cole Anthony is healthy and ready to go again, they have a chance to, to when he gets back, win some games. Well, they're going to win games. I mean, I think they want to win games when he's, you know, when he's out. Yeah. Uh, but looking at their schedule, I mean, the one, the one game, you know, if you're an ACC historian, the one game you're looking at is January 11th when Clemson comes into the Smith Center. Clemson has never beaten North Carolina in Chapel Hill, ever. And there's, there's a feeling that if you don't do it this year, you know, when are you going to do it? Uh, but, you know, UCLA on Saturday, that's going to be in Las Vegas. And, you know, it's just so difficult to play without a point guard. And if you had Cole Anthony in there, at least you'd have, some, obviously, some scoring and some stability with the ball. And that's one thing that Carolina doesn't have right now is stability with the ball. Petrushev at the free throw line makes the first. All those games that we just, the, the next five, none of them are gimmies. No. None of them are easy, but they can win them all. They can win them all. They can, they can also get beat in every game. But, you know, one of the things in, in watching this, if North Carolina had come in here full strength, Gonzaga's still better than they are. Like, Gonzaga's really good. This is an impressive basketball team that I think is going to continue to get better. They're, they're way ahead of schedule. I think Mark Few would admit that. But, you know, when you look at the landscape uh, of college basketball right now, like Kansas is very good, and they have a real chance. You know, you know who's really good is Dayton. I had a chance to watch Dayton up close. I have said a million times this year, I think this season is shaping up a lot like 2010. And when I said it early on in the year, when a couple games have been played, I didn't even process. That's the last time North Carolina went to the NIT. And, and so there is that parallel maybe this year. But, uh, and you just raised the point when we were talking about it. Uh, you know, there wasn't a, a truly great overpowering team in, in 2010. Uh, Butler went to the championship game, wound up playing Duke that season. And Dayton could be that team. Like, you, you brought that up at the break, and I think that was really perceptive. Like, Dayton could be the Butler of 2010 this year. They, with Obi Toppin, they are legit. And they've got two great glue guys in Trey Landers and Ryan Mikesell, and their guards are terrific. They're legit. I mean, look, we all love powerhouse teams and star players, but it can also be fun when it's unpredictable. Yes. And when you have teams like Dayton this year who have a chance, to go a long way. And you have unpredictable this year, but one thing that is predictable is you had better bring your defense when you play Gonzaga because this team can absolutely score. They can score inside, outside, they pass it. The question for Gonzaga is going to be their defense. Like, I think they play good defense, but with this team and its makeup, they have a chance to play excellent defense as they learn to be a better communicating defensive team. Yeah, he goes right down the middle. I really like him. Like, how much better has he got? He's efficient. He's got a three and a half to one assist turnover ratio. He doesn't make mistakes. He can guard multiple spots. I like Killian Tilly. He's from France. He's from Bordeaux, France. I Joel. love a good Bordeaux. <laughs> Joel has not been able. I mean, he's, he's too young to know the, the number one product of where he's from. Well, he probably knows that cheese is a French food. <laughs> no question. Are you, duh. Invented in of France. Of course. Most of my French comes from uh, Steve Martin. <laughs> Omelette du fromage. <laughs> oh, you learned from the best. <laughs> Still to come when we're finished from Las Vegas, Kentucky, and Utah. Timmy Allen going up against the Wildcats. The uh, Kentucky fans are a little cranky. They have to stay up so late at night to watch their Wildcats tonight. Yeah, but it's worth it. Come on. It's worth it. Plus, they get a great lead in. 
Yeah, to be able to listen to our dulcet tones as they uh, they wait for the Wildcats. <laughs> Kentucky's getting better. They're they're a they're a good team, and they're getting they're getting a lot better. And I'm a huge fan of Ashton Hagens. What a good guard he is. Walker Miller makes a free throw. Walker doesn't play a whole lot. Walker Miller's brother Wes Miller played on North Carolina's 05 national championship team and he's the head coach at UNC Greensboro. Good coach good program really good. Also an author Wes Miller wrote a, a really good book years ago when he just graduated from UNC. Maybe Georgetown at Georgetown didn't they? Yes. Ayayi with the left hand. Well, he's a player. So many different options that Mark Few has. And when this team gets completely healthy, if they can get completely healthy, you wonder about Killian Tilly. Yeah, is that even possible? For yeah, them? can he get completely healthy? Well, Euro move for Ryan Woolridge. Wow. And Woolridge has had a great game. Nine assists in this one. And he does such a good job off ball screens, making reads. And Walker Miller, nice move inside to go over that left shoulder and kiss it off the glass. Second half, Zags are shooting 78%. Yeah, they've, been, they've been dominant in the second half. Done a better job defensively. Nice slip. It, it's the theme of their team. We talked about it right from the start. The balance that they have. Yeah, come sit right down here next to me, says Killian Tilly. <laughs> But look at the balance. Those are the only seven guys who've played in this game. You got almost everybody bumping up on double figures. You know, the only team in the country with six players averaging in double figures, and they have seven with 9.8 <laughs> points per game or more. I think we should be rounding up and just give Ryan Woolridge the the 10 points a game. Well, me too. And he need, he could hit a couple baskets here in the last three minutes and maybe just get to 10. Yeah. I mean, he has played an excellent floor game. Good decisions. I mean, to have nine assists, one turnover, and then double-digit points in this game, Ryan Woolridge has done a, another really good job. Brooks with a foul. We go to the free throw line. Well, Sports Center still to come tonight after the uh, NBA games over on ESPN with SVP Tim Legler breaking down Celtics Mavericks. You got lots of the top teams in the country in action, including the Zags and some NFL stuff. All still to come tonight on ESPN with SVP. And what is Dak Prescott? He's got like a, a hairline fracture in his index finger. The tip of his index finger is that is that the the injury he's dealing with? That's not good if you're a quarterback. Yeah, it's definitely not good. I mean, for me, my index finger, I don't have to worry. I mean, if my middle finger were ever to be injured, I couldn't communicate with my friends. <laughs> that would be that would be tough for you. So we'll, we'll get you updated on uh, the status of Dak Prescott. Uh, that's the biggest game in the NFL this weekend. Cowboys are going to play the Eagles. Garrison Brooks out front, North Carolina trying to get some traps. Leaky Black plays it in. They're trying to get some turnovers. You know, North Carolina is not going to just run this clock out. They're going to continue to play and play hard. Well, Roy Williams, that last time out in the huddle, he was coaching his team hard. Right now, Garrison Brooks having to guard Corey Kispert, who's basically playing the four spot. Uh, you, you pointed that out that he did that effectively against a good Arizona team and it wasn't by design I mean you know there was foul trouble and you know, I don't think Mark Few wanted to play him at the four but he did an excellent job and really Arizona didn't have an answer for it I'm not I'm not sure anybody had ever planned for it because Gonzaga hadn't done it all season long but now I think when Mark Few sees hey we can go small with Kispert at the four and he plays good post defense for, for his six seven guard both free throws go. So Zags will finish this one off and will finish essentially the meat of their non-conference schedule. They still have a couple games before WCC play begins, but they'll have wins on the road against Texas A&M, uh, beating Oregon, they'll beat Washington, they'll beat Arizona on the road, a win against Carolina. It's kind of been the theme of 
Gonzaga's program the last 21 years will play anybody anywhere. Well they have to to balance you know not, they don't get the same kind of schedule strength from West Coast Conference so they have to go out and and people people will play Gonzaga because it's not you know you don't take a big hit if you're if you lose you know you lose to other programs that, that are you know quote unquote quote unquote mid-major conferences and you can take a pretty big hit you, know, you take a loss to Gonzaga you played a great team and Gonzaga is going to be number one at some point in this season it's just a question of how long they'll hang on to it. I'm hoping that Carolina being willing to come here might encourage a few other big programs to be willing to maybe play a home and home come yeah. here to the count. I mean Roy Williams has always gone on the road to play people he's never been never been concerned about that. Gilder kind of heaved one up you were there weren't you when the, the two Roy Williams and Mark Few decided to play this game. Yeah I wasn't standing right next to him but it was at the PK 80. I, was, I in, wanted to give you yeah, credit for the whole at thing. the PK 80 in Portland. And Mark View had said to, he and Roy Williams have been friends forever, and he said, you know, I, I want to come to Chapel Hill to play. And Roy Williams uh, looked to one of his, uh, his aides, uh, Clint Gwaldney, and said, let's make it happen. And so uh, Gonzaga played at uh, North Carolina in the Smith Center last year, lost 103 to 90 in just a great up and down basketball game. And then Roy Williams returns the game. Now, a lot of coaches would say, now you can come to my place and I'll play in the Spokane Arena or something. We'll play at a more neutral site. But not Roy. He said, I'll come in and play right, right in the kennel. And that, that's awesome of him to do that. Yeah. Tom Izzo, Michigan State, the same. Like, they are not afraid to play anywhere. Tom did it with a Spartans team a few years ago. Final minute here from Spokane with Utah, Kentucky still to come. It's been a night to celebrate Gonzaga basketball for the folks here inside the kennel. And not just here in the kennel, at Hooptown USA, they had a watch party down. Matt Santangelo helping to set it up, the former Zag great. Yeah, only in this part of the country, it's about 25 degrees outside. They had an outdoor watch party. Outdoor watch party. <laughs> They're yeah. tough. They love it here. They, they just do. love it, and they should. But give credit. You know, look, Gonzaga is an outstanding basketball team, but I was really impressed with the fight that North Carolina showed. Just really impressive. So the Zags are just going to wind the clock off and finish this game off. I, I wish they wouldn't because I'd like to see Caleb Ellis for, for walk-ons all over the country. Caleb Ellis may be the best athlete among walk-ons that I've seen. That dude's got hops. Just filed that one away for maybe a point later in the year. Two guys who have a lot of respect for one another. Give Carolina credit for coming here, but the end result was their fourth consecutive loss. That had not happened in a decade. You have to go back to 2010. Gonzaga, meanwhile, the longest home win streak in the country, still intact. Always fun to be at the Kennel Jail. Great to be with you, David. We saw a really good basketball team in Gonzaga. They got a chance to win this whole thing. Maybe the best team in the country. So Kevin and the gang in studio going to get you ready. We still have a game to come. Kevin, take it away.